Hey YouTube, how's it going? Mevlin back here again with another Alchemy Stars video and for this one we are going to be taking my Sauriel to Ascension 3. If you don't know how Sauriel works, she is the primo tile converter for water. There is actually a Sauriel-esque unit for every color. It's units that have this active ability being able to convert four of the nearest tiles into the tile of their own color. For Sariel, she's able to convert four of the nearest red or green tiles into blue. Now do note that she cannot convert yellow. Uh, this is really important, we're going to be talking that a little bit later. The second thing that's great about this ability is that it is on a really low cooldown. It's on a two turn cooldown and it's also preemptive. Usually when your Sariel skills are up, this is when you use the rest of your team's ability, allowing you to do a huge attack in a single turn. Since both of her skills are related to her active skill, I'm going to be quickly talking about that next. The first one, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, what it does is that if you don't use your active skill this round, the next time you do use your active skill, it increases the tile converting count by one. It doesn't sound too bad, but the thing is, you kind of want to use your active skill every single turn. Even if you're not going to be using the blue tiles in this turn, it's a lot better to just use your active skill on this turn and then use the blue tiles on the future turns because uh, you really want to have this skill on cooldown every single time. It's a good safeguard though, just in case you really cannot use your skill this turn. But for the most part, just use her skill. I really don't like this uh, breakthrough skill too much. And for her second breakthrough, uh, the last one in her ability, it increases the tile converting count by one. This one is amazing. It goes from four to five tile conversions every single time you use her active ability, which is a 25% increase. And that is huge. Her active skill is going to be her bread and butter. Uh, the rest of her kit is actually not that great, but it doesn't matter. Because of how broken this active skill is, you will be bringing Sariel to any team that has a lot of water units. Before we talk about the rest of her kit, I want to quickly go over her stats because this is the reason why I think the rest of her abilities are not very good. So looking at her attack, the average attack of every single hero in the game, including every single 3 star hero, is 2,851. She's only at 2,413 attack. She's ranked 71 out of 89 heroes in the game. And again, this is including 3 star heroes. And 3 star heroes cannot be ascended 3, so those are the stats of three star heroes at level 50 meanwhile these are her stats at level 80 and also looking at her defense her defense is so bad she's ranked 82 out of 89 and every other hero that is lower defense than her is a three star converter so she is the worst defense hero aside from other three star converters now that we know her stats, we can talk about the rest of her kit. Her chain combo is just going to be a mid-range DPS ability that hits a target 3-5 to five times depending on the tier. It's a pretty short range. The first two tiers are just going to hit up to two surrounding clusters. Meanwhile, the last tier is going to hit three surrounding clusters. A thing to note though is that it can hit the target multiple times. So if you're hitting a single target, the tier three of this ability can hit up to 290% of her damage. But remember, we're talking about her stats. Her stats are just way too low that I wouldn't worry too much about it. But I guess that's the best thing of this ability is that it's always going to be doing something and you don't have to think about it because it's very versatile and it's very easy to use. The last thing we're going to be talking about is going to be her equipment skill. Now it increases defense, which sounds pretty good, but this is actually not that great. The first reason why is that it only increases Sariel's defense by a certain amount. It starts off at 6% and then it goes all the way up to 12%. Now the reason why that's not good is that her defense is so low that this is gonna be very minimal value. And also most of your defense is probably going to be coming from the rest of your team. This ability does not increase the rest of your team's defense, it only increases her own. So this value is so small in comparison to your total defense. The second thing that's bad about this is the fact that in order for this to work, you have to get hit. It only procs every time you get hit by an attack. Now, the best way to survive in the game is to not get hit. You don't want to get hit. You can avoid a lot of hits by moving around and dodging the boss's ability. So for this to even work, you need to be playing the game wrong for very minimal value. 
I, I'm probably missing something here. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. If I'm missing something, let me know, but it just feels like she doesn't have an equipment skill, to be honest. Okay, I just realized that it might have sounded like I've been crap talking this girl for the last five minutes, but I just want to clarify, this hero is bonkers good. Any unit with this skill is going to be amazing in any team, especially if you're running it in a mono team like me. I have a mono water team, so I love running me my Sario. But I want to quickly mention, because of how bad the rest of her kit is and how much this active ability doesn't rely on any stat at all, doesn't matter how much attack you have, doesn't matter how much HP, how much defense you have, those don't matter at all. She is going to be the least of your priority when it comes to upgrading her. So in terms of ascension, I've already ascended my Carlene, Hadrad, and Miss Blank. Sarala is going to be my next one because she's one of my support units as well. I'm probably going to be doing Felicia as well. So just make sure that you are not upgrading her over the rest of your team. And now we can finally ascend our Sariel after talking nonsense for 5 minutes. Uh, just note though that once you ascend her, well the big one is that once you ascend her to 3, don't care about this part. The big one is the fact that we are getting a new art plus new 3D models. That's always the best part about Ascension 3, but do also note that once you ascend her to level 3, you do get enhanced tiles on your active skill, and as we all know, her active skill is the only reason why you're bringing her in your team, so having something on top of that is going to be a big, big plus. So after taking my Sariel to Ascension 3, I finally was able to beat Floor 60 of the Frostspire. Uh, she didn't really do much of a difference because you know her A3 isn't much, but I survived with barely any health. And so I want to pretend that it was the fact that she had a little bit more health, a little bit, a little bit more defense, because you know that's what you get from ascending. So I'm going to pretend it was because I A3'd my Sariel and that's the reason why I won here. So I'm going to add this here to the video. Uh, here I got really good tile RNG. It's going to take me a while to realize what I need to do here, but what my plan here is that I want to connect all the tiles and then do ascension do aurora time and be able to kill both walls in one turn so i know for a fact that so long as i end my turn in the middle not at the edge like here here it doesn't work because it's at the edge i know i can one shot that wall without my hydrad but it has to be somewhere in the middle like right here somewhere in the middle of the wall because i need to be able to aoe with both my carlene and my hydrad so i'm trying to figure out is there a way to 15 here, not at the edge? It's like, okay, this doesn't work because it's at the edge. I don't think I can one-shot the wall if it is at the edge. So I try a different path. It's gonna take me a while, I apologize. My, my thought process here was, I really wanna one-shot this because I have troubles in this fight, specifically because my, my team is very bad here. Uh, here, I try it going this way and I think I'm missing one. Yeah, I'm short one in order to connect both. I even forgot how I did it. How did I do this? Oh, that's how I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is how I did it. So I ended up like cutting in the middle and it actually was better. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. I need to connect that this way. So here, here I'm able to connect uh, both paths while being able to Aurora time in the middle of the boss exactly what I needed to kill this wall with one shot without Hydrad and the other one. Uh, I could one-shot it, not with 15, but it's fine because here we are going to be using Hydrad skill. Kind of proud of myself for that one. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this boss is just hard for me because uh, my my team relies a lot. I don't have like active skills that can kill mobs, and because the mobs are like covering the tiles, uh, I have trouble like killing the mobs all at the same time because they're 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 blocking my path most of the time. So here I'm able to one shot this wall because of Hydrad. Hydrad so OP, dude. So two walls in one turn, pretty nice. This is what my team does though. Like this is what my team is specifically meant to do. It's really good at a one shotting turn one. The problem with this team comp is then afterwards, it does nothing sadly. <laughs> here I'm gonna switch to my Carlene because I'm going to be running on a tile of yellow. Do some damage into this wall. Doesn't. Oh my god, that's really good, Carlene damage. Considering it's just her. That's. Uh, 
yeah, Curly, Curly needs to do damage here, so I had to switch my captain around. Now, I have no path to the other wall, but my Curly is on a one-turn cooldown, so I could just stay here on this side, bait the boss to stay on that other side, because I can't really do anything. I can't move to the other side. And then use my Curly skill here to teleport and kill the boss here in a one-shot. Here, uh, I, I'm not even sure if I, I can one-shot the boss. I'm, I should have, like tested it out but i end up using everything which end up being a little bit of a problem because like i said you know this comp is about one shot and then afk but if you afk on this fight the boss is just gonna summon too many mobs and too many of the tiles are going to be taken and it's hard to like move around when a lot of the mobs are standing on the tiles that you want to move on but here i want to make sure i kill it because i had a very good start I uh, end up using all my skills, using my Carlene, Sariel, and also my Miss Blank. Uh, here I'm not optimally doing my basic attacks, but it doesn't really matter because I know I'm going to one-shot the boss anyways. Yeah, I did do a couple of basic attacks here, and I'm going to kill the boss. And now this, this is where the problem is. Like This is why I don't... I, this is why my team is really bad in this fight. AFKing in, in, this, in this boss is really bad. It's just bad because... Uh, you gotta be making sure that you're doing something every turn or else you're just gonna get overrun by all these mobs. This fight is really fun though, even though it was frustrating for me, I actually enjoy this fight. Uh, it was a bit of a butt clencher, can I even say that on YouTube, a butt clencher? Because uh, they do pretty good damage, man. And my team, I guess, is kind of squishy here. I'm going to teleport with my foolish eye and go to a blue tile. What's important here is to always stick to the boss. Because if you run around, the boss is range, right? So if you run around and you let the boss hit you at range, the problem is then that you're going to get overrun by the mobs and you can no longer reach the boss. So it's it's a good idea to stick onto the boss. That way you're doing some damage every turn. Like here, I'm just going to do one tile, do a little bit of damage. My Hydra skill was ready, but I ended up not using it because I want to be syncing all my skills together. I still have one more turn on Curleen. See, here, here is where I'm like, can I survive one more turn? I wasn't sure. Like, I'm under-leveled for this fight, apparently. Like, wh what the recommended level was higher than what I am. So, I'm just going to run to this blue tile. I mean, I don't really have a choice. If I use my skills now, I'm going to be screwed later on. But good thing we were able to survive. And this is what I mean. I think I won because uh, my Sariel was A3. I'm going to pretend it was the reason. <laughs> Uh, all my skills are ready now, except Felishai, which doesn't matter. So I'm going to use my Carlene skill here. It should kill two of the mobs. Actually, it should kill... It should kill all... Yeah, it should kill both. That way, I have a straight line into the boss here. And I'm going to try to grab more colors on this side. That way, I can roar time all the way at the end of the boss. I'm going to use all my skill. Also going to be using my Hydrad. Uh, here, I'm not sure if I did the right play, because uh, you'll see in a bit, I end up ending my turn all the way at the end. Maybe it was a good idea to just end my turn right before the boss, that way I could AoE some of the mobs more. Also note that uh, when I'm running a blue run, I don't grab all the blues. If I, if I don't have to grab all the blues, I just grab the minimum amount of blues, that way I could use these blues later on. Like, there's no reason to grab all the blues and just waste them because you are capped on your chain combo right it caps at 15 so no reason to grab all the blues just grab as many as you need and then leave the rest for later on yeah i guess i guess ending the turn here is not too bad i'm able to do two more extra basic attacks into the boss like killing the boss is way more important than cleaning up the mobs here this boss is actually really tanky. It's kind of annoying how tanky it is, considering this is phase two. And phase one requires you to kill three of the walls, which is kind of ridiculous. We ended up Aurora timing here, but our tile RNG was not very good. I mean, we got one blue, so that's good. That way we could do some basics. Yeah, don't under underestimate the values of your basics. Like, running one like that, one blue on a diagonal, makes you hit the boss twice. So it's definitely worth you do that sometimes. Uh, here, I wasn't sure what to do. I definitely wanted to fill a shot because I'm pretty low 
and I wasn't sure where to teleport. I wanted to end on that red tile in the corner, that way, you know, only a few mobs are able to hit me. Uh, so if I ended here, then I, if I start here, then I can't end here later on, so I'm like, eh, I guess I'll just end here, get a little bit more healing, because uh, I'm, I'm nearby more mobs. Also, check out the shield. Bam! Shield's so thick. I didn't, I didn't know it was this thick. It's insane how thick she is. Uh, luckily, we ended up getting red on that tile, so now we could go back to this corner, which makes us pretty sh safe, but I guess it doesn't matter, because the shield... Felicia is pretty good, man. I'm gonna make a uh, debut of my Felicia. I'm gonna A3 her next, and also showcase her. Man, that shield was pretty thick, surprisingly. Uh, now we're pretty safe. We got one more turn on both our Miss Blank and our uh, Sour Yell, with two more turns on our uh, Carleen. So, Kerm's gonna run red. Just because uh, both my main DPS are going to attack here. Uh, my, my Hydride is red sub, so it's a lot more beneficial than running the greens there. Here, uh, I think I, I just wait a turn. It's a lot better just to wait for Carleen's turn. I do have five turns left, so I'm not in a crazy, crazy rush. Uh, I ended up changing into my... Um, Phyllis Shot here because I'm going to be running away and I want to heal instead of dealing damage here. Yeah, gotta make sure we survive. So with four more turns left, I've got a couple of options. I could use my skills now or I could save my skills later on for Hydrad and um, I think I do wait for Hydrad skills. Let me see what I do. Actually, the boss is super low. Actually, I don't. I shouldn't because the boss is super low that... There's no reason to wait for Hydra's skill here. I could kill the boss right now, which is so much better. That way it could stop spawning. All right, you know what, Mevlin, you're so smart. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I could kill the boss and it's definitely better than waiting for another turn because uh, it'll stop him from spawning mobs. And that's that's the scary part in this in this boss, uh, in this this fight is that too many mobs can overrun you and you're going to be not able to go anywhere in the fight. And we end up running a huge amount of blue here. Again, only grab the right amount of tiles. I do loop around there. That way I do some basic attack to that single mob in the bottom. And let's run this. This should definitely, definitely kill the boss. Pretty certain. Yeah, don't even uh, get to do my, uh, my chain combo. It's just died from basic attacks. Uh, we do Aurora time. And there's only a couple of mobs left, and it should be pretty clean. And now we only got four turns, so it should be good. Just gonna be uh, cleaning up the rest of the mobs. This fight was actually infuriating for me at first. Like, I was really frustrated. I was like, why? Why is the boss so tanky after I have to kill three of the walls? But. After a while, you come to realize I was just probably under leveled, and uh, it's actually pretty fun. Yeah, and there we go. That's a clean win. GFG. That is going to be it for my Sariel showcase. She's kind of a weird hero in that you get her super broken from the get-go and then once you start upgrading her, it doesn't really do much of a difference. Like, I'm just upgrading her because I have to. Like, I feel like I have to because I'm using her anyway, so might as well upgrade her. Let me know what you guys think about that. But you know, this art though, man, she looks so much- Wait, there's a cat. Yo, I never- What the heck? I never noticed this cat until now. But anyways, for everyone that stuck all the way through, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out!